Hello, this is Jeff Robertson, National Sales Manager for Penton Audio USA and Atis Electronics. This is a brief sales tutorial video on all the features and functions of our ECS Audio Digital Signal Processor. The ECS stands for our Echo Canceling System DSP. Uh, as all our DSPs, this is a drag and drop DSP engine. And the ECS is a 24 channel DSP with audio echo canceling, thus the name Echo Canceling System. The ECS is normally used anywhere where echo canceling would be desired, where you have multiple microphones in an environment such as a boardroom, conferencing applications, courtrooms, cancel chambers, distance learning type of applications as well. So the hardware features are the ECS is 24 channels of audio input and outputs, and they are configured in four channel audio input output cards. The four channel audio input card has 48 volt true phantom power, as well as mic preamps, and the audio output is balanced line level out. And there are six slots on the back of the ECS unit. So six by four is 24, obviously, and you can get this in any combination of audio input and outputs as you need. So you can have a 0 by 24, say a 4 by 20, a 12 by 12, an 8 by 16, any configuration. Because when you purchase the ECS unit, you buy the chassis and then you populate it with the audio input and output cards as you need for your application. Also on the back of the unit, there are eight control inputs and two control outputs built in. The eight control inputs can be configured for TTL logic at normally open or normally closed operation, as well as analog control. The two control outputs built on the unit can be configured for normally closed or normally open operation within the software. We also have a 16 control input output expander box that connects via RS-485 to the unit in case you need more control inputs or outputs for your application. Directly adjacent to the control input outputs are the RS-485 uh, ports and it's four pins. You have your two RS-485 data ports as well as the 24 volt DC power port which can power the control box expander as well as the plethora of smart remotes that we have available for all our DSPs. Next to the RS-45 port, we have the two RJ-45 network ports. Now these network ports are used to expand the ECS installation up to 32 units via standard CAT5, 5E, or CAT6 four pair patch cables. Uh, the maximum distance on these patch cables is 50 to 60 feet depending on how good your cables are. These cannot run through any network or TCP IP uh, network switch. These are direct box to box. Uh, they share 48 digital audio channels between the box across this network or link port. Uh, the software that runs the network in between is, is our TSNet. It's proprietary software. Once again, this does not go through an end user's TCP IP network. This is direct box to box, 50 to 60 feet max between any two boxes. Now above that, we have the DB9 serial port as well as the RJ45 Ethernet port. DB9 serial port is used for a couple of our uh, remotes and special application devices as well as for any third-party controls for your AMX, Crestron, or VIDI control systems. The Ethernet port will also accept third-party controls via the network th from the AMX or Crestron systems and obviously is used for local and remote programming and or controlling and the control is done through our RT's controller software which is downloadable for free. There are other applications that utilize the Ethernet port as well. Uh, one of those applications is that the ECS, as does the UAP, the LAP, and the ID8 DSP engines, has 53 minutes of digital audio message storage built into the unit, and it has the event scheduler to trigger timed control outputs as well as timed message playback and timed preset changes. Well, through the Ethernet port, this event scheduler can sync up with the end user's network time server or any of the U.S. atomic clock sites off-site through the Internet. Above the control input and output block is the telco card slot. Uh, this is a POTS card or plain old telephone uh, system card. It has a line side and a set side. The line side is used for dialing out for conferencing applications as well as answering incoming lines automatically or manually for conferencing applications. Another fun use of the POTS card is that we have built-in DTMF decoding so through the logic gates in our software page control you can actually use the telco card as a telco page um, encoder so they can dial in and actually use the DTMS on their phone to do zone paging. Uh, also on the set side you can use the end users plain analog phone sets and SIP 
is built into the unit. So direct on their VoIP system that you can actually have SIP to use for dial out and control. And with the SIP, you do not pay extra for it. It's not additional software. Uh, no hardware is needed. It's built into the unit. It comes with the chassis. But also for the third party dialer, and I'll pull up a spec sheet for this, we have at Pinton Audio Natisse our own dial pad. Uh, we have a wired or a wireless version of this dial pad. It hooks up through RS45, has speaker foam, has a phone book, it has an LCD display, uh, it has mute, it has the flash, redial, all the things you come to expect from any kind of phone. Three party conferencing as well, right through the ECS unit, five year warranty, and it's list, CE listed. Just to let you know, we have this available. Uh, it's a very popular item, and just keep this in mind on your next ECS application. That is some of the hardware features with the ECS. Let me go into some of the fun software features that are unique with the ECS alone. Now, like I said, the ECS, as well as the LAP and the ID8 systems and all the new stuff, and now even as of this recording, the messenger steerable arrays, all reside on our software platform known as a T-Studio. And that's what we're looking at right here. Now this is just a really quick small design for an ECS system that I brought up. But I wanted to show you a couple of uh, neat little features here. So I'll bring the component tree out here. One is the VoIP Receive and VoIP Transmit. Now SIP is built into the unit, but the VoIP is totally separate and different from that. And the VoIP module is right here. Now I'm just going to show you, you're going to get an error message. Now, that error message says I've already got one in the system and I can't bring any more. And the reason for that is you can only bring one VoIP module into the system. And when you bring this VoIP module in, it has a VoIP receive and a VoIP transit, uh, transmit block. With these blocks, when you open them up and go to settings, you can set the IP address for the servers. You can give them an ad, a login and password so only you know certain people could go in and activate the, uh, the stream or whatever. With the VoIP transmit received, that means it can transmit a streamed audio channel. And through the transmit, you see it's got an input node, so I can take any of my audio signals, mix them, process them, and what have you, and actually run them into the VoIP transmit to be streamed out through the Ethernet port on the back of the unit into the customer's network LAN or WAN. Also with the receive, I can receive any audio stream channel. And that could be both unicast or multicast transmitter received audio streams. And some of the applications for this are, let's say, unicast point to point between ECS units uh, for distance learning type of applications or direct video conferencing applications. Um, another common use for this is, say, in a courtroom environment, they want to stream all the mixed channels direct to an external storage device or stream it to the network server or their uh, local server for recording. Another use for this, like I said, the messaging, you can use this to broadcast multicast or unicast streams out to multiple units for messages so they all get the same message at the same time. Common applications are maybe a military base or a higher education or K-12 type of campus environment where if you got a fire security, weather alert, or even manual uh, type of alerts or even benign normal messages but it gets streamed out to all the units at the same time. Also common features for emergency messaging and streaming are big manufacturing, big industrial and chemical type of environments where they need, they all get the same message at the same time. So just keep that in mind that streaming, receive and uh, transmit, unicast or multicast is built into the unit. Uh, you don't pay extra for that. Also within the unit, the echo canceling. When you purchase the ECS chassis, the chassis comes equipped with four channels of audio echo canceling. And you can see that right here with this four channel AEC chip. There's my four input channels, my four references, and my four outputs. The chassis can be expanded up to 16 audio echo canceling channels. And what that is, is each AEC chip is a four channel chip. There are four slots, so you can add up to three more AEC chips within any single ECS chassis. The one thing you'll notice about this unit is that this AEC chip is not married to any of the inputs or outputs. I can wire any input I want to this. You notice my two outputs, I just wired one to one channel and these three are going to the other ones. So any single input can be wired to any channel of the AEC. It's not married physically or hardware to a single input or output. So it gives you maximum flexibility. Also in line with the maximum flexibility is what we have our network pager and I'll bring let's see let's bring the big one out here 
so you can see this this is our network auto mixer and with the network auto mixer as you can see right here we can have up to 256 total mixed users within a system and the networked auto mixer does is it allows some microphones or inputs on one box and some on another box you can have let's say you got 10 boxes in a big system where you can have inputs scattered throughout the multiple box units but they all get auto mixed together and they only occupy one channel of the digital audio link bus that way you don't have to take microphones or inputs from one box route them through the link bus to another box and then mix them and then reroute them back to the outputs they're basically auto mixed through a network mixer which is also a nice uh, neat feature built in one of the coolest features a product of the AT studio which is available on all the other ones but I'll show you here because it's very important for the ECS is our voice gate now this voice gate module is operates and looks just like an ambient noise gate or a regular noise gate and I'll open this up you got your threshold for your DB level to trigger the gate your hold time and your release time just like a normal gate would be but you got this also special thing down here called voice recognition now this is algorithm within the software that analyzes the incoming audio signal when the DB threshold is, is met and then it determines whether this is a, an actual voice audio pattern or whether it's just random noise and it will reject the non-voice audio patterns we've got three different algorithms and this is how critical it's going to be in analyzing the signal from soft to medium up to accurate which is the most stringent or critical analyzing this thing works great it totally rejects any kind of ambient noise such as tapping clicking paper rattling snack bag rattling mechanical you know mechanically beating on the microphone banging the podium noise rattling from HVAC or whatever like that it totally rejects that noise and only opens the gate when somebody's speaking it works extremely extremely well so keep that in mind as well and that's not just for the ECS but also for all the AT studio uh, DSP platforms the echo canceling and the VoIP streaming these are the two units that are solely unique to the ECS unit and you will only find those applications in the ECS unit so keep that in mind back to the unit that we have here one other quick thing before we go that I wanted to make sure that you are aware of is the echo canceling system as it says right here in this paragraph is unique it's our own algorithm it is true 20 Hertz to 20 K bandwidth um, and that's even with multiple participant conversations including double talk full duplex transmission of speech with no latency uh, it is super quick the more you add in there the latency does not get any worse that's fixed at virtually less than one millisecond latency within there and it's our own algorithm it's not part of any patent or lawsuits or whatever that's going around between a few of the other manufacturers but that is our ECS 24 channel echo canceling system in a nutshell if you have any questions please feel free to visit our website at www.penton-usa.com or email me at jeff.robertson at penton-usa.com. You'll find all our catalogs, such as this DSP catalog that I'm referencing in this video, spec sheets, all the software, links to these training videos, and all are right there on the website for your use. Feel free to browse. If you have any questions, let us know. And please have a terrific day.